Hello and welcome to today's video and in this one I'm going to be painting up these awesome Swamp Goblins by Highlands Miniatures which are the perfect addition to my old recently rejuvenated Orcs and Goblins army. So let's get on with it. So recently Highlands Miniatures announced they were going to be doing some Swamp Goblins and I was really excited because I just recently restored my old Warhammer Orcs and Goblins armies and these would be the perfect proxies to add to my Night Goblins and just flesh out that army. There's going to be more stuff coming in the future from them but so far we've got these awesome like Night Goblins proxies and they look fantastic. You've got some with hand weapons which I've printed off here and some with bows as well but you can also print them off with some pikes depending on what you're after. So the first thing I did is I got them all printed off and I've gone for two different regiments so bows and obviously those hand weapons as well. Got them all printed off, cleaned up and then primed them with a Xenophil Prime. At this point you can really see those details starting to come through and they're looking pretty fantastic. But when I got to this stage, I wasn't too sure what I was going to paint them with. I normally obviously go with speed paints or contrast paints. And in the past, I've used Plague Bearer's flesh to try and get some orcs or goblins flesh down. And the orc skin, I just think it looks too bright and like really almost like a warp stone type glow. So I'm not massively keen on that darker, bright green. So I decided to delve into the newer contrast paints and actually give them a proper try for a change. Now the one that I ended up going with is Gut Ripper Flesh and this kind of makes sense. It's made for the new Gut Ripper Orcs and this actually looks really nice when you start to put it on there. It's a little bit more green than Plague Bearer's Flesh and in the past I've used Plague Bearer's Flesh and then put a wash over the top of it to kind of make it a bit more orky but this actually just gives you that nice out of the pot go for it so I was quite happy with the way these started to look. For the next bit I am doing something that I've done before with my Skaven units and that is using Speed Paint, Purple Alchemy and Hive Dweller Purple. I love this combination for things like cloaks and it's really easy to do. All you do is splodge it obviously onto your palette and then you basically you go from your highs first using that purple alchemy, just kind of get it where you want some of that more bright color. And you go back in there in all more shadowy areas and stuff and use the Hive Dweller purple. And it blends together really, really nicely. So I've got like this one here that might not pick up on camera. Ba -ba 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 -bom. Let's go away face. There we go. So let's grab one and do it with you guys on camera whilst we're still going. Now, one thing to bear in mind, if you use an ink for your Xenophil Prime like I do, try not to do too much wet blending. It'll just, it'll gradually go together. Don't clean your brush in the process. So you kind of dip with your highs and you just go in and you alternate it and mix it up depending on what you want to do. So I like slosh some of this on the highs there. A lot of paint as well. I like to really go quite heavy with this, which isn't good because it means I'm going to have to go back in there and clean it up later, which is going to be pain and I'm going to most likely regret this decision but get a lot of it on there so that way it's really wet and that's nice and wet and it means it just blends together naturally without you having to do too many brush strokes reason for that is like i said if you're using an ink like i am for my xenophil so my white it'll then start to rub away at that and you just get lots of darkness and it just becomes a bit of a pain and you just kind of go in there now with some of the darker stuff and get that and slosh it into all the shadows and boom it's just beautiful i love the way this comes out I was toying between, obviously, this, like my tried and true trusted purpley pink, or I quite like the idea of these all having these really bright orange cloaks because they've got this um, like greeny plague flesh face. I thought it'd be quite fun to give them orange cloaks to really contrast against it. Mm, I still could. I'm still currently on my uh, melee units. So whether or not, like the ranged units, they could have bright orange cloaks with like yellow highlights and stuff like that. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So then I decided I would actually try the yellow and orange combination. And for that I used the speed paint, so I used Fire Giant Orange as like the darker shade and Zealot Yellow for like the lighter stage. And the thing with this is it kind of just blended in. It didn't really have that much difference between the yellow and the orange, which is a bit of a shame, but we'll come back to that later on when we get onto like the highlighting and everything else. So once the cloaks were done, it was time to put some highlights on there. And I went with my new favorite method, which is a really quick and easy method. So for the purple cloaks, I used a highlight of Screamer Pink. And then for the orangey yellow cloaks, I used this Flash Gits Yellow. And what I do with this is I use my normal just matte that I've got down that you'll probably see in all the B-roll stuff. 
And basically you pop a little bit of this down and then pop a little bit of white down as well. And then you just start to dry brush it. So you start off with the main bulk of the color and then you start gradually adding a little bit more white to it, mixing it all on the cutting mat that you can see there. You just dry brush it and then gradually make those highlights lighter and lighter. And it really starts to give a lovely little blend on those models. Now, obviously if you're doing something like a hero unit, you might want to be a little bit more precise and putting some more, I guess, intentional highlights on there. But for doing large regiments or units like this, it really starts to look nice. I found for things like cloaks or hoods or any kind of like fabric that's got quite a lot of surface area, this method really, really works because it gives quite a nice blend right across it. And because you're mixing on the palette, you're always getting that same sort of color, just a little bit lighter every single time. It's a really easy and effective way to do this highlight. I absolutely love it. So next, it's time to have a wash. And no, not in that kind of way. So for this, we're gonna use the Windsor & Newton oils, um, obviously some white spirits as well. You're gonna need a pipette, and ideally something to mix it up into. Now, if you haven't done an oil wash before, I've got plenty of videos on these, but the great thing about this is you can mix it up as thick or as light as you like. I've gone for this um, burnt sienna this time. I haven't used it before, I don't think, in any of my videos. And I just want to kind of use that because it gives it a more natural, I guess, fleshy tone. It'll darken down some of those areas, hit some of the areas that I've not already got as well. So I'm going to mix it up. So for it, first, what I would recommend, this came from a comment in one of my videos a while back, is take the white spirit and pop it into your cup. And that should be like your first bit. And that way it just helps you to control how much of the actual oil you put in there. If you go with oil first, then chances are you will do what I do, which is put far too much. Now with this, use a brush that's dedicated to this or dedicated to washing, just because if you use your normal ones, yeah, it just ruins brushes, obviously. It really gets stuck in there. And even if you try to give it a good clean and stuff, you're just not gonna get a good result. So make sure you've got a separate brush that you use. I always use the same brush over and over again. It seems to give me good results and it lasts, but I wouldn't be able to use it for like my standard paints. So get it to the consistency that you want. So I've got it quite runny. And then you can start slapping that all over your models. Hmm. Great thing about this is it just spills over so nicely. And if you're not too sure why, you should maybe use this kind of wash. The great thing about an oil wash is that once it's done, so you kind of slap it on there and you can come back in in about half an hour's time and then start taking off all those high areas. So if, if you've got some pooling, for example, areas that you don't want that color into, areas that you don't want that wash on, you can just take it off with a like little makeup sponge or a tissue or anything like that. And it's really easy to remove. If you leave it for longer, you know, if you really want to get it in there, you can then come back in and use the white spirit again and dip your little makeup sponge in it. And then it will just reactivate that wash and let you take it off. So it gives you a lot of control over where it goes. And it's just a really nice thing to use. Now I do recommend when you're doing this, be in a well ventilated area. I've got all the windows open at the moment. Obviously that's why my 3D printer is going in the background as well. So it just sucks everything out, but it's a really nice little wash. I do like using this. Once all the cloaks were done, it was time to put some Vallejo ground mix on there. I then used this Gargrix sewer contrast paint to go over the top of it, and I pretty much called them done there. The only other things that I did that I didn't talk about through this video is I just slapped a few greys and a few browns on there for things like the tassels that were coming off them, the belts, anything that looked like it should be wood on the weapons, and then like the stone for the tips of the axes and stuff like that. Now this is a really good example of less is more. I only used like two colors. So I had one brown and one gray and they were both speed paint and just picked out some bits there. But a lot of it you're just not gonna see. And when doing regiments, it just takes up a lot of time if you're doing loads of different browns and loads of different grays and really going in there. So just keep it simple and it just makes it so much easier. I think the only thing that I'm probably going to go back in there and change is their eyes. I'll go back in and just do my usual thing where I dot them with white and then use a glaze over the top of them so they can all have some really nice red glowing eyes. I do like that. I think it'll just give them something extra that'll help them to stand out. But all in all, I really like the way these turned out. I love the different cloaks. I really like the purples. Although the problem with the purple is I went back off and later on I saw my son and he was playing with his Spidey and his Amazing Friends toys and they just are basically green goblins. So Disney is probably gonna come after me and curb stomp me. So if you never see me again, Disney got me. That's just how it goes. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on this paint scheme. Are you gonna be trying something similar? I'm really excited by all the Highlands miniatures stuff. I love their sculpts. They're like my favorite sculptor that exists at the moment. They just do some fantastic stuff, especially for wargaming. But now they're doing goblins. 
really exciting. Hopefully they're gonna do some more because that'd be really, really fun in the future. This isn't a sponsored video. I subscribe to them on my own. I absolutely love their skulls, but if they ever wanna do a partnership, then yeah, hopefully they know where to find me. Hope you've enjoyed that video. Hope you can take some stuff away there that you can put into your own stuff, especially for things like the blending of the cloaks and then using that dry brush method. I found it really, really easy. I feel like I've mastered cloaks now. Did some stormcast recently and I did a really nice cloak on that and it was literally just using this. So it's a really easy and effective method to use. As always, head on over to my Discord channel. You can chat hobby and stuff like that over there. And if you really want to support the channel, head over to my Patreon page. It just helps me to keep the lights on and just get more stuff and more subscriptions and all of that stuff so I can make more content for you guys in the future. If you've got any questions, throw them down in the comments below or obviously head over to my Discord channel. But in the meantime, stay safe. I'll see you soon. Bye.